Hello and welcome to Wheels on the Bike. My name is Agnieszka and I'm a year-round cycle commuter based in Toronto, Canada. To provide a bit of context, cycling is my main form of transportation. I don't currently own a car. I do sometimes take the transit, I have an auto share membership and I take the GO train which is a provincial train service. But cycling still remains my main form of transport because it is the most convenient form of transport for me. I ride my bike all year round, even in the winter, but before I started riding through the winter, I found the entire concept of riding my bike in the winter really, really intimidating. And I think that many other people have reservations about riding their bikes in the winter. It's just not something that's typically done. Winters in Toronto can be cold, with temperatures dipping down to minus 20, minus 30 degrees Celsius. In addition to this, there's always the wind chill factor, which makes it feel colder than it actually is. In this video, I'm going to share some of my clothing considerations with you. Please keep in mind that the information I share is based on my own experience and I'm by no means telling you to go out there and buy all the things that I'm going to be showcasing. So take what I share with you with a grain of salt, apply what you'd like, and disregard what is not applicable. Alright, without further ado, let's talk about what to wear when cycling in the winter. Before I dive into the main content of the video, I wanted to share with you three tips that I found really helpful. One, layers. Make them your friends. Two, merino wool. Learn to love it. And three, don't overdress. I'm going to present my clothing choices in three different sections. And those sections are based on temperature ranges. My three temperature categories are as follows. The first one is the fall and winter transition period. So I'm thinking temperatures plus eight to about plus one degree Celsius. The next category is, you know, the, the plus one or zero Celsius to about negative eight, negative nine. And the third category is minus 10 and below. All right, let's start with the fall winter transition period. So the main thing to keep in mind for me at this point is that in Toronto the weather fluctuates quite a bit. It can be very cold or quite cool in the mornings and as the day progresses the temperature increases and it can get quite warm in the afternoon. So whatever I wear at this point needs to be able to adapt to those temperature ranges. I need to be ready for the cold and I also need to be ready for the warmer weather in, during the day. Okay, let's go top to bottom here. On my neck, I wear a light merino wool buff, which as it gets colder, I bring all the way up on my head. It's kept in place by a helmet. When dressing for this season, I wear a hard shell jacket as an outer layer. This particular jacket is waterproof and windproof, and it offers great protection in this unpredictable period. A feature I really like about this jacket, and you'll see it on my next jacket as well, is the pit zips, or points of ventilation in the armpit areas. They really make a huge difference when I start to get too warm during a ride. I just unzip them and continue riding. Immediate ventilation. Underneath the jacket, I typically wear two layers. A light, long sleeve merino wool base technical layer as my first layer. This goes next to my skin. And a light jacket that offers some warmth on top of that. Layering in this season is incredibly important. I also start wearing full fingered gloves at this point and I wear these gloves through the winter. At this point I'm still biking in my regular full length tights. On my feet I have light merino wool socks that go up to about mid calf and I'm wearing shoes that I typically wear when I ride in the spring, summer, in the fall. When heavy rain is forecasted I also wear waterproof pants over my tights and a waterproof cover on my helmet. But when I do forget I just use a garbage bag in, in its place. What I have been testing recently is um, a poncho, so it remains to be seen whether this item of clothing becomes a staple in my fall-winter transition period. Let's move on to the next category. This will cover the temperature ranges from 0 degrees to minus 8, minus 9 degrees Celsius and my clothing considerations for those. So on my head, I now wear a much thicker merino wool balaclava. I still wear my regular helmet. There's also a change in the jacket at this point. The jacket I start wearing is a skiing snowboarding jacket. It has synthetic insulation and is incredibly warm. 
It is also water resistant and offers some great wind protection. As with the previous jacket, it has pit zips or zipped ventilation points in the armpit areas. As hard as it may be to believe, I do get warm when biking in the winter and I often unzip these. So I may start my ride with pit zips zipped up and then I unzip them as, it, as I get warmer. The aim here is to keep warm but not to get overly hot. One of the great features of this jacket is that it's, it has this deep hood which I pull up over my helmet to keep my head warm. This works really well and also keeps my ears warm as they tend to get cold in this weather. In this temperature range, I typically only wear one long sleeve merino wool based technical layer underneath the jacket. On colder days, I may wear a thicker base layer, but at this point, wearing just one layer and or one technical layer next to my skin and the jacket is sufficient for me. My gloves are the same, but I do make one adjustment on my bike to ensure my hands are warm. If you watched my previous video on getting my bike ready for winter cycling, you will know that I install handlebar mitts or pogies on my handlebars. I specifically ride with bar mitts. Those are made with neoprene material and they just absolutely level up my winter riding experience. Without those, I would not be a happy cyclist. I bought those specifically because my hands were getting very cold. So I highly, highly recommend bar mitts to anyone who's cycling in the winter. I start wearing thicker soft shell lined cycling pants. I like these particular pants because they are water and wind resistant and they are lined on the inside and that makes them not only warm but also very cozy. And who doesn't want to be cozy when you're cycling in the winter? On my feet, I wear thicker merino wool socks and I also start wearing my winter boots. Here's my one point of wisdom about winter cycling. It's really easy to overreact when you see temperatures dipping into the negatives. And that's completely understandable. But consider that you're going to get much, much warmer as you cycle on. So if you are overdressed at the beginning of your ride, if you don't have layers, if you're unable to get adequate ventilation, you're going to get really, really hot on your, on your ride, which is not the best because when you get hot, you start sweating. When you start sweating, you may, um, your clothing may get damp or wet. And when that happens, you're, you're done for. You're going to get really, really cold and that's just not going to be a pleasant experience. Experience. So instead, layer up, don't wear too many clothes, and always bring extra pieces of clothing in the bag so that if you do get very cold when cycling, you can put them on. You don't want to be in a position where you're too cold because you're not wearing an adequate amount of clothing, but you also don't want to end up wearing too much clothing and overheating. All right, so let's move on to what I wear when it gets minus 10 degrees Celsius and below that. The big difference here is that I start training by bicycle helmet for ski or snowboarding helmet, which has padding inside and offers full ear coverage. I mentioned before my ears get super cold, so this is a benefit. Underneath the helmet, I still wear the thick merino wool balaclava. Sometimes I do have to take it off or slide it down to my neck because the helmet on its own offers a lot of warmth. When it gets this cold, my eyes also start getting really bothered by the wind and by the cold weather in general, so I start wearing goggles. Now these goggles that I have are made for glass wearers, but they're not perfect. Every time I stop or slow down, my glasses do fog up, which is absolutely annoying. So what I started doing is I traded up my glasses for contact lenses, and I just wear them during the commute, then take them out and put my glasses back on. This isn't ideal, but it's something that is a good compromise. Underneath my ski jacket, I now start adding layers. I still wear my long sleeved merino wool base layer, um, and typically a thicker one at this point, and then I start adding additional layers as needed. I still wear the same gloves and with the bar mitts, my hands are nice and warm in this temperature range as well. I also start wearing a full length merino wool tights underneath my pants and wear heavier wool socks that go all the way up to my knee. So all of this keeps me nice and toasty. The next tip I like to share has nothing to do with clothing, but is a super easy solution and that is coffee or any hot beverage that you can bring with you on the bike. What I really enjoyed about my commutes last year is whenever I stopped at a light, I would take a sip of coffee 
and just enjoy. So if you don't drink coffee, maybe tea or maybe just hot water, anything to provide some additional warmth from the inside out. If you're still with me at this point in the video, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found something of use in this video. Take whatever you find is relevant and apply it to build your own winter cycling wardrobe. Keep in mind that cycling in the winter should be an enjoyable experience. If you cycle in the summer, cycling in the winter should be comparable. You do have to make additional provisions in terms of clothing and in terms of how you prep your bike. But overall, the experience should be enjoyable. If it isn't, maybe it's not for you. Or maybe you can try cycling in the winter once a week. Or maybe you can try one day that is a beautiful day. Whatever you decide, make it work for you. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching.